Today we talk about bending elements. Bending elements are basically elements which are subjected to forces perpendicular to their axis, to their longitudinal direction. This force causes two effects in the elements. First is bending moment and the second one is shear force. We study these two effects separately. In our lecture today, we focus on the bending moment and their effect with respect to the stress. So we want to determine how much is the stress caused by the moment acting in a beam. Beams elements are very common. You can see many, many applications of the beam elements. I can say more than 80% of the elements in engineering, in structural engineering, are subjected to moment and shear. Today, we talk about stress equations. Remember that generally for elements that we have discussed in mechanics and materials, we have two types of equations. The first equation is how to calculate stress. The second equation is how to calculate deformation. Okay? For instance, for axial elements like this one, which is one element that is subjected to force along its direction, we introduced sigma equal to F over A as stress equation, and we introduced this equation delta as FL over EA as deformation equation. Okay, so we have two families of equations, stress and deformations. Similar to that, the second element that we discussed in class was torsional elements, like this, one element which is subjected to torque. For that element, again, we introduce stress equation, which is this one. Tau is TR over J, which is shear stress. And for deformation or twist, in that element, we introduce this equation. Phi, or angle of twist, is TL over GJ. All right? For bending elements, which is one element that is subjected to a load perpendicular to its longitudinal direction, we are basically looking for two kind of equations. First, how much is stress? Second, how much is deformation? In our lecture today, we just focus on how to calculate the stresses. Later on, we will talk about how to calculate deformations, because deformations in beams are a bit complicated, and we need to take care of several parameters to be able to determine deformations. So let's develop equation for determining stresses in a beam. Consider this beam, which is a very simple beam subjected to load. It doesn't matter how many loads are acting on that beam. I just show, I shown just one force, but it can be more than one. This beam is before deformation, so before actually applying the load. I want to take out piece of that, which is shown by section A and section B in this figure. Okay? If I take it out, that would be like this. The longitudinal axis of the beam is shown with the dashed uh, yellow line, and we have two cut sections, cut section A and cut section B. These two cut sections are flat. We know that after applying the load, that beam deforms, that beam deflects, and it would be like that. And I will take out similar points, and this will be the deformed elements after applying the load, okay? In the bottom part, we see that the longitudinal axis is deforming as well as the top portion of the beam and the bottom portion of the beam. But there is one important fact here. If we compare the original shape with the deformed shape, let me highlight it here. Consider again these two elements. This is the deformed element. Top portion of the beam is subjected to compression, and the bottom portion of the beam is subjected to tension. And after deformation, I can make one assumption, and that is the curvature of this beam can be considered as a part of a circle at any small point. I can define a radius for that, okay? So consider the radius of that circle which is defined from centroid to the middle part of that beam is shown by rho. Okay? Now, consider the original element, which is shown here, and I will show the deformed element 
on top of that. So this will be the deformed element. All right? One important fact that we see here is the flat plane A or B remains flat after the formation. Is it clear? So look at that red line, BB or AA. After we apply the load, that flat plane rotates, but it remains flat plate. That is one big assumption that we make in determining stresses in beams. And that is first developed by a guy whose name was Oller. He was living about 400 years ago. And he developed this equation and he made this big assumption that these elements, these planes, are remaining plane after the formation. Let's see what would be the conclusion of that. We can get three main conclusions from this assumption. First, the value of a strain is linearly varying in the section. What is the definition of a strain? Do you remember that? Strain is change in the length divided by the initial length. How much is the initial length in the undeformed beam in this shape? Say delta x from A to B. Okay? Look at the bottom part of this beam. The bottom part stretches and the top part compressed. So, if I look at this figure, as long as this plane remains plane after deformation, the change in the deformation, the change in the strain is linear. So when I get away from that centroid, from this uh, yellow dashed line, the value of strain increases linearly. So that is the first things that we learn. Second, we know that the value of strain is zero at the centroid of the section because the total length of that center part is unchanged. And we can learn that the maximum strain occurs on the top and on the bottom of a section. These are four strains. We know that stresses are related to strains. What is the relation between the stress and the strain? Do you remember the equation? Modulus of elasticity. Exactly. So stress is E or modulus of elasticity times strain. And because modulus of elasticity is just a number, I can conclude the same thing for stresses. So stresses are linear, they are zero at the neutral axis, and they are maximum on top and on the bottom. So a stress distribution in beams will be like this. Again, look at this. This is the neutral axis that is passing through the centroid of the section, and the stress values get larger when I move away from that centroidal axis. Another fact that we see here is that the stresses have opposite sign when I move on the top and on the bottom of the section. So for this case, because the top portion of the beam is compressed, the stress is compressive stress. And because the bottom part of the beam is stretched, the bottom part is subjected to tension stress. Here I just showed the concept. Now we are ready to go and show the equation for calculating stress. Based on the radius of that curve and some assumptions, we can develop the equation for that. You can find the proof of that equation in the textbook. And I here just show you what is the equation for calculating stress. The equation that we use for calculating bending stress is this one. Sigma is mc over i. What are these parameters? Sigma is bending stress. This is normal stress. Why it is normal stress? Look at the direction of stress and look at the cut section. Stress is perpendicular to the cut section of the beam. So that is a normal stress. M is internal moment in the cut section. This is something that we can get from the moment diagram. Okay, that's why we need the moment diagram in a beam to be able to calculate stress. I is moment of inertia. Again, this is a parameter that we discussed in the previous lecture. And lastly, C or Y is basically distance of the point at which the stress is evaluated from the neutral axis. An alternative form of stress equation, sigma is 
m over s. This equation is actually another form of the top equation. This is not a new equation. S is section modulus, which is defined as I divided by C, and C is as we defined before. But here, for section modulus, we consider C as the farthest distance from the neutral axis. Okay? And we can define two section modulus for top and for the bottom because if the section is not symmetric, the distance from top and bottom are different. Consider the point of interest is here. If you want to determine the value of stress at that point, I need to determine how much is distance of this point from the neutral axis, and this is what we call it y, or sometimes we call it c. c top and bottom are the largest distance from the top and the bottom of the section. So here is what we call it C bottom, and here we can show distance from the bottom. So C or Y is distance. We sometimes use C as the largest distance from centroid, and Y as distance of the point at which we want to determine the stress from the neutral axis. Okay? One note, which is important here, Y or C are distance of the point from the neutral axis, not from the centroid of the section. The last note, the top equation is general equation, and the bottom one is a new form of that, that top equation. This one actually gives you the maximum stress, which is on the top or on the bottom. But if you want to determine the stress at any point in between, it's better to use the top one. So in, in our solved problems, we mostly use the top equation. All right.